This week on Lights, Camera Vegas, it's the movie event that brings the biggest stars to Vegas, and we're right in the middle of all the CinemaCon excitement. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. No, ends up on our show. What the stars are telling us about their new movies. Plus... Jeez! Yet. We were the first to see Top Gun Maverick at CinemaCon. Now we're talking to the stars about the movie 30 years in the making. Well, I wasn't even born when the first one came out. Then, from an iconic film to a legend. Whoa! John Legend is driving audiences wild with his new Vegas residency, and we're sitting down with the star to get all the scoop. We did a bigger show than we've ever done. Speaking of big, Alexander Skarsgård gets in fighting shape to play the Northman. <laughs> and Craig Robinson is having a good time being one of the bad guys, which is like an animated Ocean's Eleven. Mm. Oh, that's deep. That's deep. See what he says as we're getting deep into a good time on Lights, Camera, Vegas, which starts right now. Welcome to Lights, Camera, Vegas. Hollywood hit Las Vegas this week for CinemaCon, the biggest movie event of the year. And from Keanu Reeves to Robert De Niro to Rachel McAdams, we talked to all the stars and got some big scoop on their upcoming films. Hey, Vegas. From Robert De Niro to The Rock to Rachel McAdams, Hollywood's biggest stars lit up Las Vegas at CinemaCon, and we got a front row seat for all the excitement. There's so much energy here. The major movie event set at Caesars showcases the biggest upcoming blockbusters, and we got exclusive scoop straight from the stars. Welcome back. I think we talked a few years ago when you were getting a big male star of the decade award at CinemaCon, so you're a Vegas fan, aren't you, Ken? A Vegas fan? Yeah. Sure. What happens in <laughs> Vegas stays in Vegas. No, it ends up on our show. <laughs> but don't you think this would be a great city to bring a John Wick? I mean, I know you, you got the fourth one to worry about, but... Yeah, that'd right? be great. I don't know if it'd ever be the same after we left, though. <laughs> right? Probably worse than the hangover guys, right? Yeah, we cause collateral damage. <laughs> guys keep up in yourselves with this series because a franchise is just I mean how you doing because you just fight and you're like like it's gotta take a physical toll right it does but I like it <laughs> I love it and really quickly for all the fans out there who just love and are so excited for this series Thanks. what is new about this next installment that you have not seen before in the previous films there's a lot that's a big question there's a lot of new characters Mm -hmm. You know, and um, and the way, but the world is the same, but the way that people are moving in the world is a little different. So I think this is going to be fresh things for the audience to... Fresh to, journey. Yeah. Fresh journey. Vegas headliner Sebastian Maniscalco is on a journey celebrating his new film about my father with the cast, including his dream movie dad, De Niro. And now I'm doing CinemaCon in, the, in a movie I co-wrote that Robert De Niro's playing my father. So it's uh, it's uh, it's really, really special. I, I've always loved Las Vegas. Have you ever done a Vegas night with De Niro? I've never done a Vegas night with De Niro, and I don't think that's happening tonight either. Uh, <laughs> it's all work tonight. Maybe Nobu another time. When I graduated college, I couldn't tell my father, Dad, I'm going to go to Europe to go find myself. <laughs> what do you mean, go find yourself? I found you. You're right here at my house. And also, too, I mean, this has got to be a dream thing. You write this love letter to your father and everything, and you know, and you're like, who can I get to play my dad? I mean, that's like, that's like the top of the list. You got him. Yeah, we went high, and uh, he ended up loving the script. And uh, for me, not really being a seasoned actor, I've done a handful of movies, and now all of a sudden I'm thrust into the spotlight uh, with arguably one of the best actors of our generation. Absolutely. And. Uh, I'm sitting there, to be quite honest with you, sweating. <laughs> so uh, it took a little bit for me to kind of find my feet, but once I did, uh, I felt very comfortable with him. Being from Las Vegas, we always love, we know you got a great connection to our city with your restaurants, the Nobu Hotel. Yes. But I mean, also Sebastian, he's one of our headliners. I know. How was it playing his dad? Good, I mean, I, I, I met his father, I spent a little time with him. 
and uh, he was great. And what I liked about the whole thing, it was coming from a real place, yeah. Sebastian's life, his, uh, his family, his father, and the director, Lauren Teruso, also understood that world. Uh, she's an um, Italian-American from Bensonhurst in New York. Have you come to love Las Vegas in a new way, being kind of part of our community now? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, oh, I'm, yeah, I've been here a lot, I guess, uh, over the years, so, yeah. We'll be like when you're here. Thank you. Well, that's nice of you. <laughs> Get in, loser. We're going shopping. From mean girls to playing a mom, Rachel McAdams is bringing a classic Judy Bloom book to the big screen and having fun being back in Vegas. Well, welcome back to Vegas. Thank you. Good to be here. I haven't been here. I came here for my brother-in-law's 40th. We saw Guns N' Roses and Jerry Welcome. Seinfeld, and wow. it was the best. Well, there's so many new shows now. We got Lady Gaga, John Legend just opened. I know. I saw I... Backstreet Boys here last weekend. <gasps> you did? Twice. Oh, I did. I'm just promoting all these boy bands now. <laughs> Let's talk about your movie, OK? okay. Right, By bye. the way, that was the Judy Blue books. I mean, those were the first books long before Twilight or Fifty Shades of Pearl, OK? Mm -hmm. That got people excited about reading. Yes, they really did. I know. They were infectious, and everybody passed them around, and everybody talked about yeah. them. And yeah, yeah. Judy Bloom is just one of those um, and, you know, every woman I talk to has, and, and men too, yeah. and stylist, he was like, I love that book. And we love catching up with the stars at CinemaCon. And after the preview we saw of so many amazing films, we can't wait to grab a popcorn and meet you at the movies. We're going into combat on a level no living pilot's ever seen. Not even him. No turning back now. Yet. Also at CinemaCon, we were the first to screen the highly anticipated Top Gun Maverick, where Glenn Powell received the Star of Tomorrow Award and had his own personal flight crew there to support him. Congratulations, uh, Star of Tomorrow, I think, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was it was a wild night. Had all the all the pals there uh, in flight suit supporting. It was it was, I, it was a good night. And Glenn, like you were saying, all your friends and family came to Vegas. They were in the flight suits. You gave them all their own call signs, like your mom's, like hang mom and hang dad. Like hang mom, how cool is dad. that? You know, my mom wanted to be cougar, and I would not let her. <laughs> <laughs> I said no. You're hang mom. <laughs> here, I thought we were special. Fellas, this here's Bagman. Hangman. Whatever. What the hell kind of mission is this? Listen, roles, getting parts, getting series, getting TV shows, movies, that's all a victory in this crazy industry. Yeah. But yeah. there's getting a part and getting Top Gun Maverick. I mean, how excited not only are you guys, but your friends and family about this amazing experience? It, 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 I, I don't think anybody uh, can sum up what this movie has meant to both of us and how it's changed both of our lives in such a short amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. And also, it's kind of crazy the fact that we shot this movie years ago and have been yeah. holding on to this incredible, ex thrilling experience that we know is going to blow the world away and we haven't been able to show anybody. Yeah. Uh, but everybody has been talking about it for two years. I mean, over this pandemic, it's the only question people have asked yeah. uh, is about this movie. And so to for me to not be tired of talking about it, for me to be so excited to gift the world what we're about to give yes. them on May 27th, yeah. it's, it's awesome. It, it feels like a weight is lifted off your shoulder. Like I've been living with the secret for so <laughs> long and you do not understand how much that hurts. Like now I can actually That's like so just say, this is what happened. Well, I can't say it yet until the 27th. Yeah. But you yeah. know, like, God dang. We can talk off camera, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you know. We've seen it, you can say everything. Okay, okay, so no, this no, no, is no, what happened. Hey, hey, <laughs> people will ask about Top Gun, I say, no, you're gonna freaking love it. And not to sound cocky, I just knew exactly what we did and everything we put into it. And I'm glad that the world is able to see exactly what you know we all have been saying for the past two years and we'll have more of our interviews with the entire cast before the movie soars into theaters on may 27th so many great shows and this is probably the most exciting time I think to be a part of our great A-list roster. I mean what did it feel like being on a Vegas stage as a headliner last night? 
It felt amazing. We really wanted to embrace the full spirit of Vegas. So we uh, did a bigger show than we've ever done. And uh, it's been so much fun putting it together and thinking about my entire career and how to kind of sum that sum that up in a couple hours of a show. And uh, we wanted to embrace Vegas when it came to the production style. Yes. We had the showgirls with the feathers, you know, the whole thing. <laughs> We just wanted to do it big and make it worthy of a Vegas residency. Well, it was more than worthy. I Thank mean, you. it was so entertaining. Get a What, what, what top point of your life when you probably come to Vegas before for fun and seen other shows? Did it, you think, oh, you know what? I think it's time for me in my career to add that to my illustrious resume. Was there a time that you remember thinking, I want to do that next? Well, I felt like it's something you have to earn. You know, you have to earn a Vegas residency. You have to have put in the time. You have to have had a, a successful career so that you have enough to sustain a Vegas residency. And um, I knew that if I kept at it and, and kept delivering um, when it came to my albums and my shows, um, that eventually I would get to the point where I was qualified for, <laughs> for Vegas. And uh, I feel like I'm ready now. Let's go back to the beginning. Maybe it's me, maybe I bore you. No, no, it's my fault. I and I love too, like you said, you took us on a musical journey. Uh, like you actually talked to people about, I was not an overnight success. You might That's see me right. on The Voice, but there was a long path. And yes. you talked about your days with Jay-Z and Alicia Keys. And yes. so I thought that was really profound. Yeah, sometimes you have to pay your dues. I mean, pretty much all the time you've got to pay your dues and you never start where you're going to land. And um, you, uh, you kind of, when you see artists kind of blow up on TikTok or something like that these days, you feel like things are overnight. But even for those artists, for them to have a sustained career, it's gonna mean a lot of work. It's gonna mean a lot of uh, trying things, collaborating, uh, getting doors slammed in your face. Sure. All those things are going to happen. Um, but if you keep at it, you have a chance of making it. I wanna By the way, your fellow uh, voice judge, Gwen Stefani, just finished her run. Right here in this right room. Right on that very stage. We came to see her a few <laughs> months ago, and you know, we were really inspired by her show. I've seen my friend Usher at the Coliseum. Uh, I saw Silk Sonic recently here, and uh, there have been so many great artists doing shows here in Vegas, and we've been inspired by all of it, and uh, excited to put in our own entry into the Vegas uh, pantheon. Give you all Your show is like love in Las Vegas. You're bringing some love. What is the one thing you love most about this amazing city? Well, uh, we have family here, so one of the reasons I love being here is we get to visit our family. They live in Vegas? Yes, my uh, sister-in-law lives here. And, uh, Shout out! <laughs> and so uh, we spend time here just um, chilling and, and, you know, being a family. But, you know, this city is full of great entertainment, great food, great shows, just so many things that uh, people can enjoy, and I'm glad to be a part of it. And speaking of family, I saw some posts of your kids who were here at the show. I think, didn't make it all the way through, got a little tired, but it wasn't because- Luna made it all the way through. <laughs> Miles, <laughs> Miles was like, I'm out. He's like me, he can sleep anywhere. <laughs> But is that special too, that they get to see dad on stage in this kind of capacity? Yes, they loved it. Luna was dancing the whole time and uh, just really enjoyed it. And then Miles, he enjoyed it while he was awake. <laughs> That's but no critique of the show. It's very can, entertaining the whole he time. He can sleep any, anywhere, <laughs> no matter how loud it is. <laughs> well, listen, we are just so happy. I mean, to have you as part of this wonderful community. I mean, it is such a vibrant, exciting time for Las Vegas. And I just think, you know, headliner is the next thing for your resume. Thank you. Thank you, God bless 
Still ahead, Alexander Skarsgård got ripped for his new movie, The Northman. Hear what he says about his true blood days. But first, he plays the shark in The Bad Guys, and Rachel is asking Craig Robinson the tough questions. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's deep. That's deep. Hi, we're the Backstreet Boys, and you're watching Lights, Camera, Vegas with Rachel Smith. We love you. <laughs> We were just having a very important conversation about <laughs> in Vegas, we just had BTS and BSB. And you said if you had one ticket, you'd go to. I, I got to go with BSB. I've I'm, I'm known these guys. We went a movie together. Well, the, this At the end of this is the end. Yes, yes, For absolutely. Sure. That is the correct answer. You win. Shout out to BTS, though. They do some good work. They are great. They are great, but you know, they're not the OGs. You know what I'm saying? No, not the OGs. Not, not at all. Speaking of music, you have played with your band in Las Vegas. I have. The last gig was at the uh, Brooklyn Bowl, so we got to get back over there. I know. I think it's been like about five or so years, so you got to bring Nasty Delicious back to Vegas. You better believe it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the, the, the people need it. Vegas needs it, right? <laughs> all day. <laughs> all day. By the way, you're always so much fun to talk to. You literally have a million projects going all the same time. But this bad guys is so much fun. This is going to taste extra sweet. Nope. Sucker. Does it? I teach you to shit. <gasps> totally worth it. I would be signed up for every animated film because I'm like, ooh, no hair and makeup. You get to be like larger than life, literally. I mean, Mr. Shark, what a cool character. You said it all right there. Yes, he, he's a blast to play, especially with the uh, him doing his different uh, uh, master of disguise. So to go into a different kind of voice and try to do stuff like that was a blast. This is the crew, Miss Tarantula, Mr. Shark, Mr. Piranha, Mr. Snake. Everyone copy. Copy, copy, copy. Copy. We're the bad guys. It's crime time, baby. Shark. We need a distraction. Do I get to improvise? Fine, please be subtle. I'm having a baby! Is there a doctor or perhaps several security guards that could leave that post and help me? I mean, honestly, Mr. Shark would do well in Las Vegas, don't you think? Oh, he would, he would do wonderfully, especially because he's assumed as a bad guy, so people would just be throwing their money and chips at him. <laughs> he would just be like, you know, at the clubs, he'd be at, you know, the casino. <laughs> well, <laughs> he'd be like, <laughs> DJ, play that song. <laughs> Keep me dancing all night. All night. By the way, people have kind of, it is kind of like, these are like the animated Ocean's Eleven, of course, which shot in Vegas. Is Mr. Shark more of a Brad Pitt? Is he more of a George Clooney, Matt Damon, or is he just his own guy? Mmm, mmm. Oh, that's deep, that's deep. Um, you know I'm gonna have to go with Brad Pitt. Why not, right? He's the coolest. <laughs> I met Brad Pitt one time, he was the cool. I met Clooney too. Who's the other one? I met, I met all of them, I met all of three. You met all of them super cool. See? Brad so Pitt, he was like, he was like, man, you're funny, man. I was like, who oh, you Brad Pitt? <laughs> Brad Pitt said it was funny. So you probably had a man crush on him just like everybody else, right? A <laughs> man crush, what is this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help it, man. It's Brad Pitt, right? He's the man. I gotta, gotta cool. give it up for him. But you are the man right now. I mean, my gosh, so many shows and this animated film. You're so, always so delightful, I just gotta tell you. All right, look who's talking. Thank you so much. Takes one delight to know another, right? Aw, will you come see us? We need to come see us in Vegas again. I'll be out there. I'll, I'll be out there with the nasty delicious and, and let you uh, get the word out. And then oh, we'll, let's uh, not call the Brooklyn Bowl right now. We got you back. We will you dance the night away. I, I'll be there, OK? Craig, thank right. you so much. Congrats on the film. You're welcome. Thank you. And don't go breaking my heart, because, you know, Backstreet's back, OK? Backstreet, boys. All right. Coming up next. I will avenge you, father. I will save you, mother. The Northman's Alexander Skarsgård talks about working with Nicole Kidman again and how his new film compares to True Blood. There, see, <laughs> now you all the True Blood fans have just bought a ticket. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Why would you stow away to such a hellish place? 
find what was stolen from me. And what is that? The kingdom. I will avenge you, father. I will avenge you, father. I will save you, mother. I will save you, mother. I will kill you, father. Alexander, I'm here in Las Vegas. Hello. <laughs> That's the Vegas dance. Hey, I think you were in Vegas um, for CinemaCon a few years ago for Tarzan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was there... Oh, that must have been like five years ago or something now. Have you been back since, or...? I... I, I went back... I went to a Pacquiao fight like yeah. maybe four years ago or something like that, but now it's it's been a while. So much going on here. We'll come back anytime for sure. And I can't when, wait. When you get a when you get a break. And yeah. you know, congratulations. I mean, this movie is so epic. It was so much fun to see on the big screen. I mean, really. I mean, and the things that kept coming to mind, it's like the two words were like, it's so beautiful because of the love story, the family, all that aspect, the cinematography, but also so brutal because of the battle scenes, the violence. But we don't see that combination often in a film. Was that exciting to you in this role? It it really was. And um it, it, and it felt like um, a rare opportunity to work with a a true auteur filmmaker like Robert Eggers, um, who shoots on film and has a very specific way of, of making movies. And as an actor, when you get to work on a movie in which you have incredible big set pieces that are uh, thrilling to shoot, yeah. but you also have five, six page long dialogue scenes with Nicole Kidman, just in a room, the beautifully written scenes. Uh, again, it's, it's quite rare to get both uh, in the, it, on the same project. It's, it's, it, these days it's, it's normally one or the other. You do like a little indie movie that's more character driven or a big tentpole action movie, but, but the combination of the two was quite rare and, and, and absolutely wonderful. The king, my lady. The king. You just mentioned Nicole Kidman. How nice is it to reunite with a co-star like that? But this time, instead of playing your husband, you're her son. It's so only in Hollywood, right? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's quite a different relationship, but um, uh, just great to be reunited uh, with Nicole. You are so bad. Love it when I'm bad. You are. Shooting Big Little Lies was um, one of the highlights of my career, and I absolutely adore Nicole. And um, there is an, an, an incredible amount of trust between us. I think that was necessary to make it through um, uh, Big Little Lies because yeah. of the darkness of that of relationship. Uh, so we really formed a, a very, very strong bond on that one and, and basically said, um, let's. Let's do this again. Maybe not this, but something <laughs> very let's, different. <laughs> let's do something else. Let's let's find another project. And then, so yeah. as soon as we had the first draft, I sent it to Nicole. Uh, wow. For the for the role of Queen Gudrun, because we we all agreed that she'd be the, uh, the perfect Queen Gudrun. She's um, so good. And it, obviously thrilled when when she said yes, and 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 it was so so wonderful to be reunited. Uh, and yet again, a very dark, weird, twisted, dysfunctional relationship. But I know you uh, need like a rom com or a musical or you know just a trip to Vegas after this for some please, fun. Please, <laughs> please. I think that's what, after these two. Like we need something light and fun. And as I leave you, I just got to tell you, as a longtime Eric fan, I love the True Blood nostalgia this movie gave me. Of course, being a Viking again, it was that was called The Northman. Yes. Yes, it's a sequel to True Blood. There, see, now you all the True Blood fans have just bought a ticket. Oh, great. <laughs> Alexander, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for being with us for Lights, Camera, Vegas. We've had so much fun covering CinemaCon all this week and saw amazing movies that are coming to the theater this year. It's really something to be excited about. But you know, all the previews we've got of huge new films coming out, I think the one that I'm personally most excited about 
is Baz Luhrmann's Elvis. Of course, the king synonymous with Las Vegas, and this city really shines in the upcoming film, which hits theaters in June. And mark my words, Austin Butler is going to become a superstar. And you guys are stars for being with us today, so we'll have much more movie scoop and some of our interviews in the weeks to come. But you know, Elvis, may, he may have not left the building, but we have to because our time's out. So until next time, guys, take care.